Hello, family and friends of Seward United Methodist Church. This is Reverend Mary Kay. And by the time you see this, I will be on vacation. So I'm recording it the day before it gets posted. And so I've been thinking about Sabbath and rest. And I've turned to a little book, Sabbath Keeping by Donna Scopper, that has some thoughts about Sabbath that I would like to share with you this day. So I've just kind of gone through and, and highlighted a few parts I want to share. Sabbath is setting aside time for God. Our need for Sabbath, for rest and time for God does not have a one-day solution. The need for rest has only gone underground into a deep urgency and a deep desire. Even people who believe that God is with them on Monday like to worship a Sunday or Saturday God. We like ritual. Whichever way we like to keep our Sabbath and get our rest, and give time to God, we know that today we live in a society that is not friendly for Sabbath keeping. We are desperate for rest in a culture that seems to reward only effort. We understand ourselves as overworked, but in a way we are proud of our exhaustion and our failure to honor Sabbath. We know our restlessness well. Many people are not only very tired, we are sometimes even proud of our fatigue. Sabbath faces a real problem. Work, not rest, is what our culture values. We may be desperate for other values and other rituals than those of work, productivity, and effort, but until we honor values other than work, we probably will not have other rituals. Sabbath keeping values our ability to rest, not merely our ability to work. In Sabbath, we live in God's economy, where our purpose is not production, but play. In keeping Sabbath, we measure ourselves by a different yardstick. We try to see how much delight we can take in the world, not how much we can get done. We can delight in how much we leave unfinished and open a gift to God, not how much we can finish off. Sabbath, time for God, is a gift in its origin and in its keeping. Sabbath keeping is a way of managing all time. Time for reading, time for work, spiritually. So it's a way of managing all time spiritually. Sabbath connects what is disconnected. Sabbath is not the opposite of work, but the basis and depth of work. Monday can be God's day as well as Sunday. It is a question of perspective. We do not move from Sabbath to work, from holy days to profane days. We keep work holy and pack holiness in our bags for work. Sabbath is a way of living, not a thing to have on a list to complete. By observing Sabbath, we become people who both work and rest, and who know why, when, and how we do either of those. We also recognize the occasions when we do both at the same time. We know how to pray, how to be still, how to do nothing. Sabbath people know that our time is really God's time, and we are invited to live in it. 
we are living our eternity now, this Tuesday and Wednesday, this Saturday and Sunday. My prayer for all of us is that we will have time to see the world with a different yardstick, that we will see how much delight we can take in the world, that we will rest. I'm heading out on vacation because I know I'm at the point that I need rest. I love my work. Don't want to change it. Don't want to do anything different. But I also know I need rest in order for me to do my work at its best. And so that's what I wish for all of us, that all of us may have time for rest so that there is energy and renewal for doing work that we find meaningful and fulfilling. Summer is upon us. This summer, may you find so many ways to delight in God's world. May you find rest. And may you return to work with a renewed sense of energy and vocation and purpose. I will be on vacation and we'll get back just in time to turn around and go to annual conference. So I will see all of you again on Sunday, June 11th, when we have our hymn sing. I am excited for the year ahead and the plans that we will be making and all the ways we will be in ministry together. Y'all take care. God bless.